Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to take a look at the BQ slash Big Tree Tech Super Spring Steel Sheet Magnetic Flex Plate, that's a bit of a mouthful, and see how to install it on an Ender 3 V2. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're taking a look at the Super Spring Steel Sheet from BQ, also known as Big Tree Tech. About a month ago, Big Tree Tech reached out to me on Twitter and asked if I wanted to try out their Super Spring Steel Sheet, and so of course I said yes. I have long been a fan of magnetically attached flexible print surfaces because they make removing prints such a breeze. Now my experience with them goes a little something like this. A couple of years ago when I first started in 3D printing, I used to struggle to get the prints off the bed of my printer, and so the removable spring steel sheet on my Prusa Mark III was one of the big features that drew me in and convinced me to part with my money. Well then Creality released their C magnet print surface, which has two fridge magnet style magnets, each the size of a heated bed. One magnet has adhesive on it and you peel it and stick it down onto the bed, and the other magnet has the actual print surface on it. And while the product was inexpensive and worked reasonably well, I still had problems with it sometimes, where prints would stick too well to the print surface and then the print surface would get damaged when peeling it off of the print. And after that, I got into the Wham Bam Systems Flexible Build System. And it has a heavy-duty fridge magnet style magnet that's the size of the bed, but it's a lot stronger than the C magnet one. But instead of having the print surface on the second magnet, it's got a spring steel sheet to which you apply your choice of build sticker. They've got a variety of different surfaces. Now going back to my Mark III, Prusa later came out with a textured powder-coated spring steel sheet, which left an awesome finish on the first layer of a print. But they were having difficulty producing them on a large scale. Other companies stepped in with powder-coated spring steel sheets for the Mark III, and I bought one from Matter Hackers. It was about $65 at the time, but it worked really well, and I really liked the texture that it left on the first layer. So that brings us to the BQ, or Big Tree Tech, Super Spring Steel Sheet. They sent this one, sized to fit an Ender 3 or similar printer, with a 235 by 235 millimeter bed. In addition to the spring steel sheet, they also sent along the fridge magnet that goes on the bed. According to the BQ site, they have these sized for the Prusa Mini and the Prusa Mark III, as well as for printers with 235 millimeter square beds and 310 millimeter square beds, so that actually covers quite a lot of printers. Now this particular one fits a 235 millimeter square bed. With the Super Spring Steel Sheet, there's not a separate print surface sticker that has to be peeled and applied to it. Instead, it has this nice texture, and it's on both sides. I think it's a powder-coated surface, at least that's what the website implies. I mean, it says special powder, high-precision industrial oil, but I don't think oil is the right word here. If it was an oil, nothing would stick to it, right? Now, they also say it can withstand temperatures up to 200 degrees C. None of my printers have heated beds that can reach temperatures that high, and so far, I've never printed with a bed hotter than about 80 degrees C anyway, so I'm confident that I'm not going to ruin it by overheating it. The spring steel sheet is thin and quite flexible, and as I discovered somewhat accidentally, it's actually quite musical. Anyway. <laughs> As for filament, the site says it's compatible with PLA, ABS, TPU, and PETG. The site also has a list of don'ts for the product. Don't scratch it. Don't bend it too far or you could damage the coating. Make sure the magnet's holding it down before you print. Clean it before you print on it, but only with alcohol. And level the bed before you print so the nozzle doesn't drag across it and damage the coating. Now, before I could put the Super Spring Steel Sheet to work, of course, I had to install it on my Ender 3 V2. And that was about as simple as you could possibly expect. The bed magnet has an adhesive backing, so applying it to the bed is easy. It's a quick peel and stick sort of thing. The Ender 3 V2 has a removable glass bed, so I removed it, gave the aluminum a quick wipe with isopropyl alcohol, and then attached the magnetic sheet directly to the aluminum bed. 
Start at the back of the bed and remove the backing sheet a little bit at a time and slowly work toward the front of the bed, pressing it down as you go. Doing this helps prevent trapping air bubbles under the magnetic sheet, which could cause problems later on. Once the magnetic sheet is installed, line up the super spring steel sheet and the magnet holds it in place. Then adjust the bed knob so the nozzle is the right distance from the print surface. Despite the fact you could do this if the entire printer was at a 45 degree angle, this is commonly referred to as leveling the bed. Not because you're making something level with the earth, but because you're making sure the nozzle is at the same level as the bed. Think of level as in, we're both on the same level in Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is still a thing, right? Right? Okay, with the product installed, I wanted to get started printing so I could see what kind of finish this leaves on the prints. Now, really the only time I'm concerned with the surface finish that the bed leaves on a model is when I'm printing something like a display bezel for a little LCD screen or an electronics project case or something like that, and the part prints face down. I feel that a little texture on it gives it a more professional look. Now, if the first layer is actually the bottom of the print and it never actually gets seen, then it doesn't matter whether it's smooth or textured. Now, of course, I also want to see how well printed parts stick to the print surface and I want to see how easy it is to remove parts from it. I printed some things in PLA and TPU and PETG just so I can test those filament types. I printed a small SD card holder and Luby 3 ds Aria Dragon in Protopasta Galactic Empire Metallic Purple PLA. The SD card holder and Aria both stayed on the print surface while they were being printed and released remarkably easy when I started to remove the Super Spring Steel Sheet. That first flex that happens when I start to lift the sheet from the magnet seems to be enough to release the prints. Now I printed the SD card holder because it's a short print height-wise but it has a large enough footprint that when it's printed on a non-flex surface, it needs a bit of force to remove. And I printed the Aria Dragon because it's got a relatively small footprint, but it's tall. And I wanted to make sure that the super spring steel sheet would hold on to it. Sometimes tall, skinny prints can pop loose from the bed as the print head gets higher and higher from the combination of the nozzle drag and leverage. I also printed a 50 millimeter square in IC3D black PLA because I wanted to see how the texture would look. The texture seems to be more subtle than what I get with the powder coated PEI sheet on my Prusa Mark III and it has a finer grain to it. Overall I like the look of it. I printed a smaller version of my flying disc model in Soval's yellow TPU and this was mostly to test adhesion with TPU on the super spring steel sheet. Now the nice thing about TPU is that it's flexible, so it's usually easy just to peel the prints up off of whatever print surface you have. And I printed this cool little motorcycle that uses V-slot wheels in Greengate 3D's translucent purple recycled PETG, which for me usually prints really well. On this motorcycle, the right side of the handlebar starts out on the bed, but part of the handlebar that touches the bed is only about two square millimeters. Remember what I said earlier about skinny parts? Well, that part of it let go after about 10 layers. So that part was a little bit of a failure. But the rest of the print came out well, and it's such a cool little model. So here are my impressions of the BQ Super Spring Steel Sheet. You're printing PLA? That works great. Printing TPU? That works great. Printing PETG? Uh, it depends on the model, I guess. If there are tiny parts that need to stand on their own for a while until they connect to something else on the print, my experience is that it's going to have problems. Now, the bed magnet's thinner than what I'm used to with my Wham Bam flexible build system, but so far it seems to be holding the spring steel sheet really well. Speaking of magnets, while the coating on the super spring steel sheet is able to withstand bed temperatures up to 200 degrees C, magnets lose their magical magnetic properties as they get hotter. So those kinds of temperatures would probably destroy the magnetic sheet that comes with the product. Now the blue markings on it are a pretty close match to the blue trim pieces on my Ender 3 V2, so for me, that's a plus. And I like the subtle texture that it leaves on the first layer of a print. If you're printing a front panel or a box for electronics projects or a display bezel for an LCD, this is really nice. Unlike a glassy smooth finish, the texture helps hide fingerprints and smudges. So is this something worth buying? Well, the sale price for the Ender 3 size product on BQ site is just under $32 US, which honestly is only a little more than I paid for the Creality C magnet when it was first released. 
At its regular price of about $40 US, it's only a little bit less than premium flexible build systems of the same size. But in the short time that I've been using it, apart from that PETG issue that I had, it's worked well, holding the prints in place and releasing them with just a slight flex. Since I haven't had any major issues with it, I consider this to be a good mid-range magnetic spring steel option, and I'm considering buying the 310x310 size to install on one of my larger printers that has a plain glass bed. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for today, and now that we're at the end of the video, let's go print something cool and then easily remove it from the printer without having to wait for a huge glass bed to cool down or break out sharp implements of destruction. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those of you who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. Hey, if you like this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And I've got some other videos here that you might want to check out, too. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. It's absolutely free and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.